So now just looking the other direction where the absolute value quantity might be greater than a particular number. So in this particular example, we're still using a similar example that we had before, but now it's just the absolute value of x is greater than five. So the meaning of what this is saying is that we've got the distance of the um, of x from zero And then it's going to be is more than five units away. So if our distance from zero, or the distance of uh, x, when I say our distance, the distance of x from zero is more than five, that means that x has to be further than five from zero. So that means that x needs to be somewhere over here, or x needs to be somewhere over here, basically less than negative five or greater than five, and nowhere um, within negative five and five. So it turns out that this statement right here is equivalent to the compound inequality x is less than negative five, or, not the word and, but the word or, since we've got a disjunction going on right here, or when x is greater than 5 going on right here. So again, conceptualizing and understanding the meaning of this is really going to um, help us to understand how we go about finding the possible values of the variables. So make sure we always isolate an absolute value when you're trying to solve it in an equation or an inequality. You can see that we do have the absolute value isolated on the left-hand side right here. Um, so that means that if we've got the absolute value of something and the distance of y over 3 is going to be greater than or equal to 4 from 0, then just kind of visualizing this right here, if this is where 0 is and we're supposed to be a distance more than 4 away, then um, that means that over here has to be the possible values of y over 3, or over here has to be the possible values of y over 3, because we need the distance of y over 3 from 0 to be more than 4 from 0. So what this means, and how we should set this up then, when we're dealing with a greater than, when the absolute value is greater than a particular um, number, is that we can say that the y over 3 is going to be um, greater than or equal to that 4, so we keep the sign still the same. But then the other case is that if we're going to be more than 4 away in the negative direction, we actually need to be lower than that negative bound, or the y over 3 needs to be less than or equal to negative 4. So you can see how the inequality that I wrote right there just mirrors what I was um, showing on the number line over there. And then with this compound or inequality, we can just solve the separate um, simple inequalities right here. Really, you just need to multiply by 3 for both of these. Since you're multiplying by a positive, you do not need to flip the direction of any inequality symbols. So you're going to end up with um, y being less than or equal to negative 12 or y being greater than or equal to 12 when you isolate y alone as the possible values for y to satisfy that original inequality. Okay, and then the next one, there's just going to be some isolating that we need to do here. So in order to isolate this absolute value quantity, we're going to need to um, undo the adding of that one first. So we'll need to subtract 1, which is then going to give us negative 5 times the quantity of 4x plus 3. That's absolute valued. That's going to be negative 45. And then we can divide by the negative 5, and that will finally isolate the absolute value. And that's going to then yield... 4k plus 3, that's absolute valued. It's less than, oh, but we just divided by a negative there. So because of that, we're going to flip the direction of the inequality symbol. And then negative 45 divided by negative 5 is positive 9. So that's saying that uh, the absolute value of 4k plus 3 is greater than 9, which means the distance of 4k plus 3 has to be greater than 9 from the number 0. So that implies then that 4k plus 3 itself needs to be greater than 9, or we need the 4k plus 3 to be at negative 9 and lower, so less than negative 9. And then we can solve each of those. So if we subtract 3 first, we're going to get those couple of inequalities and then divide by 4 there's no flipping that needs to be done since we're dividing by a positive we end up getting that right there as the possible values for k then and then some special cases that we want to consider with some greater thans right here um, so with the first one right here it's actually not um, 
any different than what we were just dealing with right here because you just have an absolute value that's greater than a positive number um, two. And so what that implies then is that if the distance of x plus five from zero is gonna be more than two away from zero, then x plus five itself has to be something that's worth more than two or x plus five itself has to be something less than negative two for the absolute value of it to come out to be more than two ultimately. And then you can just subtract five from um, both sides. That'll give you that there, same thing here. And that'll give you that right there. So x needs to be less than negative seven or greater than negative three, okay? Now just kind of contrast that with, oh, what if we had instead now like a zero? When is it going to be greater than zero? Well, if you just kind of think generally, like when is an absolute value going to be greater than zero? Like pretty much almost like all the time, except like I guess in one case where sometimes an absolute value might be, you know, coming out to be exactly zero. So almost all the time this should hold, just maybe kind of in one case not. So really the only time this would come out to be zero is when you have a negative five for x, right? So if you think about, okay, so if I had negative five plus five, it's gonna give me that, which gives me that, but that's not going to be greater than zero, right? So we can't have x be negative five, but we can have x be anything else because otherwise the absolute value is always gonna be um, greater than zero. Like for example, x could be negative four because you're going to get that, which is going to be that, which is greater than zero, right? Or you could have x be, I don't know, like 16 because you're going to get that, which is that, which is greater than zero. So it's pretty much any number except negative five. So I'll just kind of state it like this. So all reals except negative five um, would be the solutions to that. Um, if you allow it to now be equal to zero, then I guess now we can allow negative five, right? So this would definitely be all real numbers that are going to be allowed for values of x since it's always going to be greater than or equal to zero for absolute value in some quantity, right? And then in the last case right here, if we're gonna have some negative involved, now we know that um, it definitely can't equal, but when is going, an absolute value of something going to be greater than negative two? Well, it should always be greater because what we see right here is always gonna be at least zero or higher. So since it's always at least zero or higher, then this greater than is always going to hold. So it turns out that all real numbers are the possible numbers that we could plug in for x. So you can plug in anything you want for x and you're always going to get a true statement out of that.